Good morning, class. Today we are looking at um, the family and the community and the and community. And that's our strand. And then south strand, the family and the community. We are looking at it with regards to obedience. Obedience. At the juncture, one may ask, what is obedience? On the board, I have obedience refers to following or carrying out instructions given by a higher authority. Remember the last time when we spoke about authority? We said there are people in authority, right? In our houses, in our schools, in our churches, mosques, shrines, we have people who are in authority. Those people who are in authority are those who have the power to give us rules and regulations and they expect compliance. Failure to do so, we may have or may attract some punishment. Now we are looking at obedience with regards to character formation in Christians. Character formation, right? Character formation. Okay. Now we have characters, right, from different people. When you do what is good or acceptable, we say you have a good character. When you do what is bad and unacceptable, then we say you have a bad character. Now it is, the, it is the wish of every Christian that their children grow up with a good character and then they conform to societal norms and rules and also regulations. So we are now going to look at character formation in Christians. When we talk about Christianity, now there are things that Christians expect their children to do or ways in which Christian brings, Christians bring up their children so that they will have a good character. One of them, first of all, is telling them stories from the Bible. Telling them stories from the Bible. All of you know of several Bible stories. Some of them are, we have the prodigal son. You know, Jesus Christ taught many parables. We have the parable of the prodigal son, the parable of the sower, the parable of the mustard seed, we have the parable of the virgins and all these ones. These are various Bible stories that Christians tell their children in the house to ensure good character formation from them. The second one is also we have devotions. Devotions. Devotion just refers to prayer, right? Prayer or prayers. You can you can have different types of devotions. We have morning devotions and also evening devotions. I have not heard of afternoon devotions before. Of course, you can have afternoon devotions if you, if you choose to. But the most common ones are morning devotion and then what? Um, evening devotions. Okay. We also have um, attending church services together. Attending church services together. Christians, uh, Christians encourage their children to attend church services together with the rest of the family. When we go to church and then after church, we come home, we still fellowship together, and whatever we have learned, we put it to practice. Christians also expect that their children take roles in church. Roles in church. When we talk about roles in church, it means that you should look for a position in church, join a group or a movement so that you can do something meaningful for Christ. Then, Christians also expect their children to attend youth programs. In my church, and a Catholic anyway, we have Catholic Youth Organization, which is called CYO. We have the Parish Youth Movement. All these ones are youth groupings that are available for Christians to join. When you join some of these groupings, they enrich your spirit in Christianity and let you learn more. If you look at all the moral values in some of these groups, then it helps you to generally become a good Christian. Also, having talked about Christianity, Islam or Muslims also have character formation. Like I said with Christianity, character formation also with Muslims refers to ways by which the Muslims train their children so that they may also grow up to become responsible people in future. Now, Muslims do this by praying five times a day, isn't it? We have the five daily prayers. Muslims encourage their children to take part in these five daily prayers. We also have attending religious activities such as 
Arabic recitals or what you people often call uh, Makaranta. Right? Makaranta in the local language, right? Normally, you go to places for malams, imams, and all these people to take you through training, which will ensure that you are versed in the Quran. Now, we also have obeying the teachings and learning the ways of Islam. Obeying the teachings and doing what? Learning the ways of Islam. Right. We have taught several stories also about Prophet Muhammad and some of his followers. We are spoken to about some of their moral responsibilities or some of the things they did that helped to grow Islam. And so when you attend all these things, you are taught things like Salat, Hajj, and all these ones. Remember, Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam, right? It is expected that every Muslim should go to Hajj at least once in a lifetime. Where you people call Mecca, it's a pilgrimage. Where every Muslim is expected sorry, to attend the ones that if you are capable. One of the most important thing also, things also taught is the Friday Juma prayers. Friday Juma prayers. Friday Juma prayers is a congregational prayer where all, all, all Muslims around the world converge in mosques on Friday afternoon to, to do a congregational prayer. In fact, Juma prayer is a compulsory prayer in Islam. So every Friday afternoon, Muslims are expected to converge and carry out these prayers. Okay, now, okay, having looked at um, character formation, now we are looking at disciplining children, how parents discipline children at home. There are times when, no matter what parents do, their children still fall foul of the law. And so when you fall foul of the law, these are some of the ways by which you can be disciplined. Discipline often requires giving you a certain level of punishment or showing that your behavior is disapproved on in a certain way. Right. One of the ways we can discipline children is by scolding or reprimand. You know, when you talk about schooling, schooling often refers to speaking to children in a way that will not make them happy. Okay? It is not necessarily insulting them, but sometimes we can use some strong language. You know, you know, sometimes your parents will call you and they speak to you in a manner in which you won't be happy about. It's as a result of what you have done wrong. Okay? So sometimes, you are called. I don't really want to use insults and I don't want to use any harsh words. But there are times your parents call you and then they speak to you in a certain way that makes you understand that they are not happy about you and you may not also be very happy about some of the wording they may use. For for the very violent parents, well, I don't like I said I don't want to use some of the words here. Now we also have good role modeling, good role modeling as parents. We are expected to be good role models for our children. Of course, children often emulate a lot of the things their parents do. And so, one of the ways of disciplining or training or bringing up children is to be a good role model for them. Once your children realize that your lifestyle is good, then they are bound to follow your good example and then live good lives. We also have what we call caning or flogging, the ones you see most. In fact, if I had my way, or most people believe that caning is one of the most effective modes of disciplining children. I may have my own, you know, opinions, but then, like we say, opinions differ. Okay, so caning refers to, you know what caning is, right? Using the cane to, 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 to flog people who fall foul of the law. I believe all of you at one point or the other have received the cane before, isn't it? Okay, and when you are caned, you feel a certain physical pain. Okay, and if so whenever you want to misbehave and you remember of the cane, then you are brought to order. We also have denial, denial of interest, right? Denial of interest. For some of you, you have activities you enjoy most, isn't it? Activities you really like. So sometimes when you fall foul of the law, you may not be scolded, you may not be caned, but 
some of your, you may be denied some of your interests, right? Like some of you, I know, you like football a lot. And so for some of you, you know me very well. Whenever you fall out of the law and I feel you don't want to listen, I deny you from going for PE. So your colleagues will be out there playing football whilst you are in class, right? We have denied you that particular activity. And you know, when people always want to do the things they enjoy, and so when you deny them some of the things they enjoy, you are very sure that next time they might not repeat those offenses because they may not want to be denied of their interest. We also have what we call extra duties. Extra duties. Extra duties refers to a situation where you are giving more work than you ordinarily would be expected to do. So maybe in your houses, if you have done something wrong, maybe your duty was just to wash dishes, right? But because you have been given extra duties, apart from washing of the dishes, you are also expected to mop the house and also wash cars, right? Or you may be added extra duties like sleeping. So when we talk about extra duties, we mainly mean that ordinarily, the work you were supposed to do, you will be expected to do more exceeding what you were naturally supposed to do. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, these are basically some of the ways in which we discipline children. Of course, in your own houses, you may have other punishments that may be administered. These are not all, depending on your situation or your circumstance, different punishments may be administered. Some people are asked to run around the buildings, some people are asked to pull their ears, others also undergo different types of punishments, right? Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said, basically, these are the very few ways by which parents or people in authority discipline children at home. So we are coming to the end of our lesson. And then I'll be, I'll be putting some questions down there for you to attempt. And then if you have any other concerns, you can channel them through this same channel. And then we will attend to them in our subsequent lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, end of our lesson. Have a nice day.